How's it going everybody? I got here behind me my 2001 YZ250 I picked up before the summer and uh, yesterday I actually went and got a, another 2001 YZ250 parts bike so I'll be swapping a lot of the parts into this bike and uh, seeing if I can get it to run and drive. It's like you take a rear tire off without any tools. I'm going to start by taking off the seat. This right here uh, is how I'm uh, keeping track of hardware. I just have little plastic tubs right with, with the whatever it is in there. Just put the hardware in. Two birds with one stone. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take off this crusty old silencer. Come over here and get the subframe bolt. There we go. Now it looks like I can just take off this uh, whole subframe without even taking anything else off. Yep, good thing I got lots of hardware with, with the other bike. Take off the gas tank. Huh, sure is a pretty easy disassembly. And now for the expansion chamber. It's the tightest bolt on here so far. Man, that's rusty. All right, time to take it off. Oh yeah. Oh man. Look at all that. Here, let me get the light. Look at all that nasty oil. Oh man, look at all that. Let me pour it out. Oh, that's cool in there. That's no good. Oh, that's just lovely. Hopefully the cylinder's okay. All right, might as well drain the coolant now. Coolant strain, we can go ahead and uh, take the radiator off. Sometimes these hoses get stuck on the aluminum parts, so you can kind of gently uh, lift them off here with a flat blade screwdriver. That one's loose now. You just go and do that to all of them and then take it off. The radiators are off. I'll just take off the kickstart and make it easier for uh, us to take out the engine. I'll let you guys in on a secret here. I don't know if it's a really a secret, but if your kickstand has a lot of plague and slop like that, that means the previous owner has been really kicking it over and really really hard trying to get it to run. And that's a good sign that the engine's either hard to start or doesn't run. So careful for that when you're looking at getting a used bike. Spark plug wire. Get that out of the way. Now I take off these uh, the head mounts. All right, time for a couple other uh, little motorcycle uh, tips. So, if you got an Allen wrench that's not going all the way in. You can just lightly tap on the back so it won't strip it out and then use a wrench and uh, go like that so you just hook it in you get a lot more leverage like a cheater bar and then when you want the Allen wrench out you put pressure here and then rotate it on the bottom it comes out easier It's another part you should uh, routinely grease when you're doing your uh, maintenance on your motorcycles because this can seize up and that's not fun when that happens. You can tell this one wasn't wasn't routinely greased, so it's all crusty in there. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the carb now. A good trick for getting a carb out in tight tight spaces is to get one screwdriver on the uh, or one end of the screwdriver on the bowl here and the other one on the intake and then just pry it light gently it comes off every time all right let's get the swing arm out of here so we can get the engine out all right glad 
that wasn't stuck, but the bolt's still in there. That's usually the, the bad part. So a little update, the swing arm bolt through here, the pivot bolt is stuck. Um, I tried to beat it out and it won't come out, so I'm going to take off the shock linkage up here and up here, get the shock out. Um, and so I can rotate the swing arm up and down a little bit easier. And that might uh, give me a better chance of freeing up that bolt. Well, I ended up taking the whole shock out, and uh, sure enough, the swing arm is really, really stiff. It's starting to get a little bit looser, but most likely the, the bolt in here is stuck to one of the needle bearings or a little spacer or something. Well, about 30 minutes later, and uh, beating with the hammer and the punch, I got it out. Uh, thank goodness it wasn't completely rusted in. But as you can see, no grease on here. I mean, it's just a little bit tacky, but this should be covered in grease. Uh, there's even some corrosion right here. One of the real important things about having dirt bikes is to always grease those bearings, because this will happen. All right, let's get these motor mounts out. There we go. leave that partially in there so when you take out this one it doesn't shift and uh, pinches the bolt down there which makes it a little bit easier down the line to get it off. Man this one's really tight. Alright finally got it with the big breaker bar. I have a an air uh, impact gun but I just try to do everything by hand first. More fun. Hey, look how corroded that bolt is. Yeah. Good thing it came out. So I was taking the clutch cover off to get the clutch cable off and came across a really unwanted surprise. Look at all that corrosion in there. Yeah, there's tons of it down there, that's no good. All right, got the clutch cable unhooked, carbs off, I got the stator wire unplugged, I think we're ready to take the engine out now. The engine came out good. Uh, now I just gotta get the controls off, rest of the plastics, get the forks off, and then uh, see how we are at the frame, frame, see how good a condition it is. I got another frame with it, so, and I got the whole complete bike with the parts bike, but it's all torn apart. Get the coil off here. This thing's so rusty. Uh, one of the layers here just fell off. So I'll be using the other one. Just get the number plate off. There we go. Now you can really see how bad these forks are. Look at that. So that's what happens if you drive through salt water a lot and uh, you don't wash off your bike good seen this so many times yeah wash off your bike guys be very careful making sure you don't strip out these screws here seems like any screws uh and bolts on the handlebars seem to always get corroded like these ones those these sometimes do and then on the other side too
gonna go ahead and uh, loosen up all these, the trooper clamps, so I can get the forks out. All right, up next, we gotta get this uh, top nut off so we can get the top triple clamp off. All righty. Move you out of out of harm's way in case it came crashing down. All right, bit of rust and it's like sawdust. I don't know why sawdust would be in there, but yeah. Now we're down to the bare frame. When I was flipping it over, I just came across this massive crack here. Look at that. I completely missed that when I was buying the bike. Yeah, it's just completely rotted right there. Huh. Well, that's why you wash your bikes. Well, that wraps up this part of the project. Uh, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next one. I'm going to be uh, cleaning up that engine, some other parts from the other bike, like the exhaust and uh, the other frame, uh, suspension, just things like that. Get this thing ready to put back together. And then the next video will probably be me putting this back together and then uh, hopefully riding it. Um, so yeah, it all came together pretty smoothly, or came apart, but a couple little snags here and there, but we worked through it. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching and have a great day.